Hello, hello. Testing one, two, one, two. Testing one, two. Testing one, two, three. Testing, testing one, two, three. Testing, testing. Reminds me of that SpongeBob SquarePants episode where Patrick Starr is testing the walkie talkies. Testing! It's ah! good stuff. I think that show came out when I was eight or nine years old. SpongeBob SquarePants. It's amazing how. Like, is that even on the air anymore? Is, is Nickelodeon even a thing anymore? Like, is that still a channel? I wouldn't know because I've. It's been so long since I've cut my cable, but I imagine Nickelodeon is probably still a thing. But when I was a kid, Nickelodeon had some pretty, pretty good shows on it. SpongeBob SquarePants being among the last good shows on Nickelodeon. But anyway, just waiting for some folks to get in here. So far we're a minute and 15 seconds in and my screen is showing nobody in here. Yep. Just talking to myself. Unless my screen is wrong, in which case, please type some gibberish or just hello or whatever, whatever you want in the chat and let me know if you are here. I, I don't know how well this application updates things in real time. Like, okay, so according to my screen, one person just hopped in. Uh, so is there just one person in here or are there, is there nobody in here or is there more than one person in here? So. The chat helps, you know, to, to confirm that, that there are people in here um, because this is something I was talking about last week is that I'm always reluctant to talk about any or to, to bring up anything interesting or anything important when there are so few people in here. It says I was in the wrong place. What are your thoughts on school starting in September? I mean, I don't know. I mean, uh, school... Uh, from my recollection, school starts in, you know, school started in, in August and I, uh, so September is not super far off from August. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, you can't, can't keep it closed forever. And I think a lot of the you know, dangers of uh, spreading illnesses, which I think is what your question is really about, spreading illnesses. I think a lot of the dangers of spreading illnesses were present long before this coronavirus pandemic. Um, if you look at the actual chances of dying from it, you know, it's, uh, it's a drop in the bucket. You have a better chance of getting killed in a car accident on your way to school than you do from dying from the coronavirus. Now, if you're among the small group of individuals who, if you're among this, I just saw these sent a message and I'll read it, but I'll finish my thought real quick. If you're among the small group of individuals that uh, is, you know, susceptible then, um, you know, to, to dying or having some kind of irreversible harm, then uh, I think those people should <laughs> do the right thing and, and stay home until they test negative. But, um, Nah, yeah, we, we gotta get we gotta get back to normal. We, we just have to get back to normal. Let me read your message real quick. It says, kids coming into class with COVID, just wondering what you predict to happen. Live school, online school, labs with sterilizing equipment in between classes. Well, I can tell you that I've read and I've, I've, I've seen like some commentary videos and stuff on, um, you know, what the CDC guidelines are for when school reopens. And they're very unrealistic. They're very, very unrealistic. Um, you know, if you have a class size of 30 people, um, you know, six, six feet apart from one another. I mean, let's try to do the math. I suck at mental math, so please bear with me. <laughs> but if we try to do the mental math here, right, six times 30, I guess 30 students, it would be 29 degrees of freedom. So I'll, but I'll, I'll, I'll try to keep the calculations uh, simple. So six times 30, what is that? 270, right? No, no, no. Jeez, what am I thinking? Yeah, that's 270 feet. You know, 270 feet 
in one dimension, and if you square that, what do you get? 270 times 270, what is that? You know? Unless my math is wrong, something tells me I'm doing this calculation wrong. <laughs> My mental math is awful. Give me a calculator and I can bang it out all day. But the point that I'm trying to make is that if you have a class size of 30 in a standard size classroom and, uh, you know, keep, keeping the kids six feet apart is impossible. It's impossible. You can't do it. Six times 30, 180. Oh my God, of course. I think I was thinking nine times 30. That's where I got 270. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I feel like an idiot. Uh, it's the, that's the bummer about live streaming. You can you can look like an idiot when you least expect it. Whereas when you're recording videos, you can edit them out. But yeah, okay. So what's what's 180 squared? You know, I mean, 100 squared is a thousand square feet. Um, 80 squared would be 640 square feet. So you'd have to have a classroom that's 1,640 square feet, right? I think I think I did that correctly. Um, and that's just not possible. It's not possible. So, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, I, I think with all of this, I think people just need to be free to make their own choices and to manage their own risks, right? I could understand, you know, providing accommodations for people who are uncomfortable going, I mean, to a certain degree, I mean, how long you're going to provide those accommodations, I don't know. I could understand, you know, providing accommodations for people who aren't comfortable. But for those who are not afraid, <clears throat> for those who are healthy enough to survive it, if heaven forbid they do get it, you know, I think those people should have the free choice to go back if that's what they want to do. You know, I think freedom is the solution to all this. Let people, let people assess their own risks, let people manage their own risks. And, um, you know, because a lot of people are saying, you know, uh, it's pretty nutty to me. A, a lot of people are, are, are defending this government force, you know, locking people down through the use of force. If you don't close down your business, I'm going to, you know, fine you or uh, arrest you. Or if you resist arrest, you know, God forbid, shoot you with a taser, spray you in the eyes with chemicals or, or, you know, maybe even shoot you if you, if you pose a real threat to them. People justify that because they think that that sort of preemptive violence will save lives, right? It's an ends justify the means argument, but the ends are incalculable, incalculable. You don't know if you're gonna save more lives. You don't know if you're gonna benefit more than you're gonna cost the society, right? Because again, since all these lockdowns have started, what have we seen? We've seen more domestic violence, we've seen more suicides, we've seen more drug abuse, more drug uh, um, overdoses. You know, that's why I don't like to play around with, you know, consequences. I don't like to play around with, with you know, what we think is gonna happen. What I like to talk about is the right thing to do. What's right, what's wrong? Well, it's certainly not right to force people to, to force people not to engage in a voluntary interaction. You have two consenting adults. They agree upon something voluntarily. Who the hell is anybody to force them not to engage in that interaction? That's a serious question. It's not rhetorical. And um, I'm not saying that, you know, you're defending, you know, the lockdowns or anything. I'm just saying that people should be free to make their own choices. Kids want to go to school. If the parents are okay with it, let them. If the teachers are, are okay with it, if the teachers are good and healthy and they're willing to take the risk and they just want to go back to work, let them. It really is that simple. Do the right thing. Let people make their own choices. That's my position. So, did I answer your question? <laughs> so those of you who just hopped in here, hello, welcome to my live stream. I was originally gonna stream on Friday because I've been streaming for the last couple of Fridays. Um, I've been streaming for the last couple of Fridays, but uh, tomorrow I'm actually, I actually have uh, some family and my mom is coming. My mom is coming up here to South Carolina from Florida. 
and she will be at my house by the time I get off work. So I want to be able to just head straight home and, and spend some time with, uh, with my mom over the weekend. So I decided to, uh, you know, sort of push my, or not push, I guess push would be if I was pushing it off into the future, pull <laughs> the live stream up to Thursday. Um, and then maybe probably do the next one next Friday. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I just think that, um, you know, the use of force in the name of, of uh, consequences, the use of, the use of, the initiation of the use of force, when people attempt to justify that with what they believe is a righteous, you know, cause, they think that the consequences will be better if we have this much violence, this much force, this much coercion. Um... I think that's a that's an inherently logical argument because you know consequences are impossible to predict. But seeing that if two people are agreeing with you know if two parties agree on something, um, there's nothing wrong with that interaction because they both consent. If one party consents and the other one doesn't, that's wrong. I mean, that's how we teach our children, right? You know, keep your hands to yourself. Don't hit. Don't steal. Don't do anything that the other child doesn't want you to do. We have no, we have, we're very comfortable teaching that to our children, right? But somehow when we, when, we, when we zoom out to the level of society and government and all the rest of it, you know, we, uh, we suspend those principles, you know? And, uh, and it's a problem. It's a problem. It's a problem. And it, 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 it leaves the gate wide open for, you know, people to claim, like, relativism, right? You have your code of ethics, I have my code of ethics, and we will both coexist with each our own code of ethics, right? Everybody has their own code of ethics. It's like, okay, right? So if I burn a place down or I, you know, shoot somebody... I'm not wrong because I'm living by my own code of ethics, right? If my daughter, you know, <laughs> grabs another kid by the hair and just pulls her down to the pavement, I can't tell my daughter that that's wrong. She's got her own code of ethics. No. No. There are universal principles. Um, now, whether or not people want to actually live by them, you know, is a different story. Whether or not you can live by them and still re live a reasonably comfortable life is another different story, right? I mean, I have to pay my taxes. That's, you know, I comply with that. But, um, yeah. So, as much as, po as much as reasonably possible, I try to, uh, try to apply simple, basic, universal principles, right? And if anybody tries to say that, you know, there are no universal truths, right? <laughs> That's a funny statement. Somebody saying there are no universal truths, it's like, okay, well... Is that a universally true statement? <laughs> Somebody claiming that there are no universal truths, it's like, okay, well, there's at least one right there, you know? And if you say there are no universal principles, then it's like you've, you've defeated your own argument in the very utterance of that statement because, you know, there's at least one principle that you ought not to believe that there are no universal principles. So, yeah. And it's not that hard. It's not that hard to tell, you know, the right thing to do, the wrong thing to do. I know there's a lot of propaganda around there. I know that. I know. But at the end of the day, when you just kind of look at it, you know, if, if you just think it like kids at a daycare center, you know, like you can easily tell, you know, when the kids are doing something right, when they're doing something wrong. It's not that hard. Not that hard. So, yeah, those are my thoughts. I think freedom is the way to go. Ba, 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 ba. But I would love to know your thoughts, though. You know, it's not just me rambling. I want to know uh, the reason I do these, these live streams is so that uh, is so that people can, um, you know, give me their thoughts. So, not just rambling in front of the camera. If I wanted to ramble to myself, I would just do it in the mirror. <laughs> at 3 a.m. when everybody else is asleep. So, yep, yep, yep. But 
I think, you know, the, the one thing I want to talk about is, uh, okay, Kathy says, I'm not sure, but I don't want to be around a mass of people right now. Yeah, and listen, um, I perfectly respect that position, you know. I respect that position. Um, and all I ask of anybody is the same respect in return. You know, if I want to be a mass, around a mass of people and all of those individuals in that mass of people are okay being there, I respect the same, I, I expect the same respect that I give somebody who doesn't want to be around people. I expect the same respect that I'm giving them in return. You know, that's, that's my, that, that's my only thing. You know, you, everybody, everybody makes their own choices, right? And like I said, for those who are, who are unco uncomfortable, it's like, yeah, okay, you know, I can understand making some accommodations for them. <laughs> but, you know, like there's a lot of hidden costs to keeping everybody away, you know? I took my daughter to the park recently for the first time in months. She had a very hard time, like, you know, meeting people. She was very shy, she was very skittish. You know, when some, when some little kid would come up to her, she would, you know, cry and run over to me. She didn't used to do that. This is a new thing. So I have to like retrain her on, you know, how to, how to interact with people, or at least I just have to expose her to more people so that, you know, she'll, she'll kind of understand that they're not, you know, she's not under attack or anything like that. But, um, but yeah. Okay. Dan Goldman asks, where do I work? Good question. Good question, Dan. And welcome to the stream. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I work, uh, for the pharmaceutical services division of a large biotech company doing research and development on active pharmaceutical ingredients. I don't think I want to identify the company by name. Um, I don't know. Maybe I just have like, I'm just a little bit paranoid about that. I'm sure if somebody was, you know, ambitious enough, uh, they could, um, you know, leak it to the world or whatever. I mean, my, you know, I, I have a, a, a Facebook page for Ben's Ken videos. I, I launched it very recently, so there's not much going on there. There's not many followers, but, um, you know, and that's tied to my personal Facebook page, which has, you know, my, my workplace on it. So, like, if you were really ambitious, you could figure out the exact company and location where I work. But actually, you couldn't figure out the exact locations, the exact location, because uh, in this city, there are two sites uh, for the company that I work for. There's an east site and a west site. And I work for one of those two sites. I work at one of those two sites. So, yeah, I, uh, I, do, uh, I do research and development, um, a lot of organic chemistry lab techniques, you know, um, you know, reaction, you know, reactions and stuff like that. Um, you know, using a lot of rotary evaporators to concentrate things, using a lot of chromatography columns to separate things, just a lot of your, you know, you know, your, your, uh, your basic organic, uh, lab bench techniques. There's a lot of instrumentation that we do. We do, uh, you know, high performance liquid chromatography or HPLC for short. And we, you know, we send samples out for, uh, NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, I'm um, trying to think, uh, we send out things for uh, x-ray diffraction um, and things like that. So, um, yeah, a lot of, uh, I would say a lot of mostly like organic chemistry lab techniques are, uh, are employed, or are uh, implemented where I, where I work. Okay, let me get the chat up. Uh, Dan says, awesome, thinking about going into pharmaceuticals too, but not sure yet. Cool. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know much about it given that I've only worked, you know, at this company for, you know, like nine months or so, but, um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not involved in like pharmaceutical sales or anything like that. Um, I, you know, I, I, I work for sort of like a middleman company, like this company, it, it, what, what we do is we're hired by pharmaceutical companies to, to do, you know, the research. So pharmaceutical companies, they don't all do their own research. In fact, you know, more apparently from what I understand, more of them nowadays are kind of like outsourcing their, their research, their, their, their research. So, um, so like they'll, they'll hire third party companies to do their research for them. And I guess they'll just do mostly stuff like on the business sales side, legal side, things like that. Um, but yeah, largely the, the whole industry is still pretty much over my head. I'm still, you know, learning and, and, um, but yeah, so far so good. It's a nice big company. Got a lot of uh, resources around. Um, so yeah, guy says, I just finished an integral organic chemistry lab techniques and had some practice with it. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I, I would recommend, um, 
to you know get get with a get with a professor and uh, start doing some undergraduate research because in terms of the actual like skills that are going to serve you well in the in the real world if you if you end up doing lab work in terms of like those skills I would say that you know you learn more doing your own independent undergraduate research than you do um, you know from lectures and, and and your you know your lab the lab component of your lectures and stuff like that. So that would be my advice, my unsolicited <laughs> advice. Uh, let's see, Kathy said, funny, my husband is an organic pharmaceutical slash R&D chemist in Eugene, Oregon. Right on, right on, right on. Very cool, very cool. So yeah, he and I might be doing, you know, sort of uh, similar work. Um, although I'm, you know, super green, you know, I'm not really able to work independently yet. And to be honest with you, lately, you know, things have been pretty slow because um, many of our customers have shut down. So, you know, I, I haven't been assigned a whole lot of project specific work. Um, but, you know, I can still like punch in and, and clean a lab and, you know, maybe like low key work on some YouTube stuff, like <laughs> update my thumbnail images and, you know, create new social media accounts. By the way, I do have Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Discord, all of which you can find on my channel page, the uh, bottom left-hand corner of my channel art, the banner thing at the top, has links to all four of those, all four of those platforms. Um, you know, I could, I could use some help gaining a little bit of a following because, uh, I don't know, man. I think I have like something like 17 Twitter followers. It is sad. And I've had the account, the account for a long time. I've just never really like contributed to it. Never really contributed to it. I never really saw much value in it, but I'm kind of starting to see some value in something like Twitter, especially if, if you can amass a large following, you know, because, you know, it kind of forces you to distill your thoughts down to, you know, I, I can't remember how many characters it is. I know it used to be 140, but maybe they, I, th I thought I remembered them saying that they, uh, have increased the number of characters in a tweet, but you know, cause sometimes, you know, especially nowadays <laughs> I'll look in my newsfeed and I'll see like these long Facebook posts. They're like entire novels written. And it's like, dude, I, I didn't, I didn't scroll through my Facebook feed so I could like read the gate, the great Gatsby on my computer screen in one sitting. I'm like, you know, there's some value in condensing that down to 140 characters or however, however many it is. So that's pretty cool though. That's pretty cool. I, I would love to talk to him. I would love to talk to your husband because, uh, you know, having, having some, some tips from a, from a seasoned pro. Kathy says, told all the chemistry teachers in our district about your videos. I love your videos. Thank you so much, Kathy. You are awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. My channel can certainly use the help. Um, my electronegativity video that I dropped on Monday, I think the last time I checked, it was today, it's gotten like 107 views and 13 likes. Um, zero dislikes, which is cool. Although I, I've never really had a problem much with dislikes uh, because I think I have like an average uh, like percentage of like 94%. So like 94% of the thumbs up or thumbs down are, are, are all like 94% of them are thumbs up. So, but to me, like 107 views in what is today three it would be like three days oh well let me let me think about this so i dropped it at 3 p.m on monday and it's past 3 p.m on on thursday so it's been three days so i've been getting like you know 30 ish 33 or whatever you know 35 roughly views on this new video per day um you know and about four likes per day on this video and um you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm grateful for all of it, but you know, I, I just, I want more. I want more. I want it to be in me because I, I truly believe that that video was good. I'm not trying to be, you know, I, this might seem arrogant, but I, I think that, you know, cause I, I worked, worked pretty hard on it. You know, I, I think that, you know, the length of it, I think it was very brief. You know, I kept it less than eight or it was around eight minutes, like seven minutes, 59 seconds or something like that. Um, and uh, the guy says, used to watch your videos for general chemistry. Cool, man. Cool. But yeah, that electronegativity video, um, I think it was, I, it was nice and brief. I think I stopped it where it should have been stopped. Uh, I think I explained, you know, fairly well 
I think that, you know, my visual aids that I made were good. Um, so, you know, it could be that I just recently, it's because I, I ha I've had such a long uh, lapse in productivity that, oh yeah, okay, so Kathy brings up a very good point. She says summer, for most people, I think sounds like a lot of views for the sounds like a lot of views for this time of year. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe I'm I'm aiming too high. I don't know. Maybe I mean, I don't know. I don't know. But um, but you you do make a good point. You know, summer is a very slow season for educational for at least for my educational YouTube channel. If I were to show you my analytics, I mean, there's a clear valley <laughs> in viewership uh, in the summer months. So yeah, I could totally I could totally uh, totally understand that. Um, and then, but I think the biggest thing is consistency, you know, like somebody pointed out on one of my recent videos, like, look, you know, like you can change the content, you can make, you know, you can make it, you can, you can do whatever, like, and that's all good. But like, one thing you need is consistency, you know, like if, you know, like my, my favorite TV show was, uh, my, my TV show, my favorite TV show was Breaking Bad, right? So if like, if, if Breaking Bad was supposed to come on on Sunday or whatever, and it doesn't come on, I, I, you know, I'd be upset. And then eventually I'd, you know, if it happened, you know, too many times, I would just tune out and not watch the show anymore. I'm not going to stick around for something that's not being consistently delivered. So I think consistency is important. So, okay. Um, Ako or Acho, I hope, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Um, uh, nice to see you again. Can you help me convince my friend that alcohol is literally toxic for our bodies and is basically poison? No, I'm not fun at parties. Uh, I don't know. I mean, is your friend in the stream? I mean, you know, alcohol, uh, I don't know. I mean, this is common knowledge that alcohol is poison. If, if, if they have a hard time understanding that, I don't know if there's much that I can do to help with this one. You know what I mean? Um, alcohol is actually one of the very few drugs that can kill you Okay, there's just some chemical facts that I can tell him. Okay, okay, here's one. Here's a chemical fact. Okay, you cannot die from... You know what? I'm going to try to... I'm going to try to censor myself uh, for fear of being demonetized here. Because if I talk about, like, a lot of illegal drugs and stuff, even if I'm not promoting their usage, I, I'm afraid that, like, I'll, I'll get demonetized, and I don't want that to happen. So there are a lot of, uh, I'm not going to name the drugs individually, but there are a lot of like what, what we would call very, very hard drugs. So like when I say the word hard drugs, um, there's a lot of them that come to mind, right? There's one that starts with an H. There's one that starts with an M, right? Those two drugs, the one that starts with an H and the one that starts with an M, neither of them can kill you from withdrawal. They can kill you from overdose. Yes, I'm not disputing that. But when I'm, when I'm saying withdrawal, I'm talking about building up a, a high tolerance to these substances and then, and then stopping all of a sudden, right? And your body freaks out because it, it doesn't have what it's used to. Those two substances, the one that starts with an H and one starts with an M, cannot kill you from withdrawal. Alcohol can. <laughs> so it, it, is a, it is a very dangerous drug. It is uh, highly toxic. It is highly poisonous. Um, because alcohol, when it gets processed into the liver, it actually gets metabolized into uh, a chemical called acetaldehyde. And acetaldehyde is actually uh, several times more toxic than the alcohol itself. Um, yeah, I, um, I don't know. I mean, th I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a, a drink in moderation. Personally, I don't drink. Um, I, I, I've, you know, I haven't had a drink in years. It's been a very long time since I've, you know, I, I, I ne I've never had a, a problem with alcohol. And I'll also, I mean, I've, I've been drunk a couple of times, but I didn't like it. You know, I didn't like losing control. And also, you know, people have different personalities and they, ha they, 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 they react to things differently. Like some people, you know, when they, when they have a few drinks, you know, the wheels come off and they can like let loose and have a good time or whatever they want to do. And, and they're fun. Like they're lively, they're animated. They're like the life of the party when they get drunk. I'm not, I'm not among those people. I don't, I don't, you know, if I'm intoxicated with alcohol, I don't get fun. I don't get loopy. I don't get, you know, I'm not, I'm not fun to be around in that state. I'm, I'm actually, I get very irritable 
and I get very upset, like very easily. I have a very short fuse. Um, so, you know, of course, when I was in high school, like, you know, underage drinking was like the fun thing to do. But, you know, once I, once I got to college, even before I turned 21, I just was like, you know what, like, you know, if, if the only reason that I'm doing this is for conformity, then that's not a very compelling, that's not a very compelling reason. So I think I'm just going to stop doing this and, you know, just, you know, whatever. But, uh, but yeah, alcohol is, uh, it's definitely poisonous. This is common knowledge and, you know, there's, you know, I don't know. I mean, people die of alcohol poisoning all the time. I don't, I don't understand how how anybody could, could this, I mean, does this person, does this friend of yours also believe that the world's flat too? I mean, <laughs> I don't know, but you know, best of luck to you. Um, you know, people, people believe nutty things sometimes. Dan says, I think part of the problem is that those topics are so saturated with videos already. When someone searches electronegativity, it will usually pop up with the most popular videos. Okay. Okay. Let's, you know what? Let's try that. Let's try that. Um, sir, go, go. You know, I, I probably couldn't do it because my 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 uh, browser, you know, keeps my history and, and it's. I think it's algorithmically modified or whatever. But go into your go into your YouTube search engine uh, in the search bar and type in electronegativity and and you know see which hit like how many how many videos you have to scroll through before you get to mine. I really, I mean, if you wouldn't mind doing that, I would really appreciate it. I'm not like trying to command you to do something, but <laughs> I'm just asking, you know, nicely. Like if you, if you could do that and give me some feedback, I would appreciate it because, you know, like I've been saying in my last couple of videos, you know, I, I need the feedback, you know, I need to know what I'm doing that, that's good. I need to know what I'm doing that sucks. I need to know how I can improve. Uh, let's see. That was an issue we were arguing about. He claims that alcohol helps for relaxation for the body after work. But how is that logical when it harms the body? He's not scientifically literate at all. No, no, it doesn't help you relax. It doesn't help you relax. Uh, it, it'll actually like, like, you know, if it, like for instance, if you wanted to like take, if you wanted to drink, you know, alcohol before going to sleep, like that's not going to help you sleep better. You know, it, it's going to disrupt your, your circadian rhythm. And it's also going to, you know, like, you know how, like, if you drink a lot of alcohol, like, you, you know, you have to pee, like, really bad, like, you have to urinate. Um, you don't have to urinate because you're taking in more liquid, necessarily. I mean, you are taking in marginally more liquid, but if you drink three glasses of water, you know, you're not going to feel the urge to pee as much as if you drink, like, three glasses of beer. And the reason why is because there is a, there is, I, I believe it's an enzyme I'm a little, I'm a little uh, rusty on my biochem, but there's a, either an enzyme or a hormone or something that, you know, communicates like that, that sends signals to your brain that tells you, you know, when you have to, when, well, when your bladder is full and you need to go to the bathroom, right? And alcohol disrupts that enzyme, right? So it basically tricks your brain into thinking that your bladder is full when it's really not. And then you pee, but then you're losing water that you really should have had that you would have had if your brain wasn't being tricked into thinking that you had to pee and so you end up dehydrated um but yeah um i mean there's 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 other ways to relax after work but you know like cracking open a couple of beers is not every once in a while is not gonna not gonna kill anybody i mean there's nothing wrong with that but you know, everything's okay in moderation. Um, everything is okay in moderation. So that is my position. So yeah, uh, like I said before, if anybody would mind searching the term electronegativity, right? Electronegativity. If you would search for that, please, in the YouTube search bar um, and just see which video comes up. I don't know if it makes a difference whether you're subscribed to me or not. I don't know. I really don't know much about algorithms and search bars and stuff like that. Um, he says, thank you so much. I will tell him what you said. Yeah. And listen, you know, like there's more, there's people who are more credible than I am on these topics. I mean, talk to any, talk to any primary care physician. They'll tell you, you know, I mean, look, I, I kind of understand the skepticism because there's a lot of bullshit that goes on with, uh, you know, like schools and stuff like the just say no. And, you know, 
you know, like one hit of this is going to kill you. And like they, they, they believe that it's okay to stretch the truth if, if they can like scare people away from, from doing drugs. But the problem with that is that when you lie to people, you ruin your credibility. And so people have a hard time taking you seriously. Even when you are telling the truth, if you have a history and a reputation for lying to people and, and deception, uh, then people aren't going to take you seriously, whether you're telling the truth in the future or not. So I think like a lot of these um, anti-drug campaigns are, are reaching too far. I think they need to be honest about what drugs do and, and what they don't do. And that would include legal substances like alcohol and, you know, increasingly all over the country, cannabis. You know, people need to be honest about what it does. People need to be honest about what it doesn't do. And then I think, cause I think you have to, you have to keep that credibility with the kids and in, in, because kids are smart. A lot of kids are smart and they will jump on any inconsistency you have as a parent, right? Guy says, I saw your video on electronegativity when I searched for it just now. It was about 20 videos below the first one. Okay. You know, that's a good point. I'm going to, I'm going to hit the road now because I, I need to go get a coffee for my wife, but I'll talk to you guys. If it's a really long message, I might not be able to read it until I stop at a red light or if I'm driving on like a really straight road or something, but, um, <laughs> 115th video on electronegativity when I, when I put in elect on YouTube, when I put in electronegativity and I subscribe to you. Okay. So obviously I need to find a way to optimize, to do some kind of search engine optimization on my videos. And I actually picked up a book. I ordered it on Amazon. Um, it's called YouTube secrets. And, uh, there's a section in it. I, I read it briefly. Oh, it's beeping because it thinks that my backpack is a person. My backpack is on the seat and it's like, why doesn't your backpack have your seatbelt on? It's all well, cause it's a backpack. So sorry for that beeping noise. Okay. Finally it's done. Um, Okay, so obviously, like, I need to revisit that chapter. I mean, I, I read through the book once, um, but I have a hard time with reading, like, and, and, and uh, re like, retaining things that I read. Um, so I'm going to have to go visit that chapter again and, and figure out how to improve my, my search engine optimization. It was below periodic table element song. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and, that, and that's why, you know, people, people, that's why people ask people to like their video, you know, like at the end of the video, I'm like, you know, if you think this video is well-deserved, you know, drop a like on it and whatever, those things matter. It's not just for like egos. It's for like, you know, those kind of things tap into the algorithm and, and they get, they get boosted up. Right. So all those things, you know, subscriptions, likes, ringing that notification bell to get those notifications, those things actually matter. You know, and I was talking to someone about this last night. Uh, I went out to trivia at this uh, restaurant slash brewery. It was a lot of fun. And she was saying like, yeah, well, you know, if, if you enjoy doing it, you know, then, you know, what, you know, the, you know, wherever the, the viewer, the view count lands, I mean, that's whatever. But, and I'm like, yeah, I, I get that. You know, that, that makes sense. But at the same time, it's like, you don't, you know, if, if I wanted to just talk, you know, I could just talk in, you know, I could just talk out the window of my car or I could talk you know, with, in my room at 3 a.m., like the reason why you publish stuff to YouTube is because you want people to see it, right? So the numbers are important. You know, increasing the view count is important. Now, I'm not saying that I need to increase the view count to the exclusion of everything else. I mean, I'm not gonna, you know, start start doing tabloid, tabloid gossip or, or, you know, talking shit just because those kind of things uh, have high view counts. I mean, I still, you know, want to want to maintain the objective of, of educating the world and, and spreading chemistry knowledge, but it is important. You know, the numbers matter, views matter. Um, somebody just asked me a question. What is it? Do I watch any sports? Yeah, yeah, I watch. Uh, I like basketball. Yeah, I like basketball a lot. Um, I used to watch football, like American football. Um, not so much anymore, but. Uh, I'm trying to think what other sports I watch. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, mostly just basketball. You know, basketball, it's fun to watch. The guy says, hi, I love your video slash stream. Yeah, Anton, welcome back, man. I, I recognize your name. What's up, dude? Hope you're doing well. Um, when it comes to sports, uh, basketball, I like it because there's a lot of scoring per unit time. You know, you watch a soccer match 
or, uh, or you know, association football, I guess is what it would be called internationally. In America, we call it soccer. You watch that, I mean, you know, you can go a long stretch of time without anybody scoring. And I understand that that makes the goals, like, more valuable and more exciting. I get all of that. But I, I just like seeing more scoring per unit time. And uh, so that's why I like basketball a lot. I also like, uh, I also like uh, mixed martial arts, you know, like the UFC, things like that. I think I read something about, like, Conor McGregor just retired again. But uh, hopefully everything goes okay on that. But, um, but yeah, I really like fighting a lot. I, I like watching fights, too. Um, da, 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 da. Basketball is nice. Yeah, I thought you'd be more of a tech sport kind of person. For example, Formula One or Indi IndyCar. Nah, not really. Not really. Yeah, I like I like team sports. I'm not I'm not a huge fan of individual sports. I'm not a really big fan of tennis. Not a really big fan of golf. Um, I do like pool though. Although I don't know, I don't really watch pool. I like playing pool. You know, I mean, I, and of course I don't watch pool because it's like never on. But like, um. Although it's kind of hard to, I mean, I think pool is a sport, but it's kind of like, yeah, you're not really sweating, you know, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, I would say basketball and fighting are my favorite ones to watch. Those are the most exciting to me. Good question. Love it. Love the good questions. But yeah, this is good feedback. Thank you guys for running those searches on electro negativity to see where my video lands. Um, I really appreciate it. Of course, when I search electronegativity, it's like the third one down, but that's probably because I'm always looking at my own stuff. So, um, or, you know, in the past, I've looked up a lot of my own stuff. So nobody understands the algorithm. <laughs> at least I don't, I don't understand the algorithm. But that's what my book is for. I can read it again and uh, figure out how to improve. I, I know that, like, I read something, gosh, I wish I could remember the exact word for word, but, like, as a creator, when you upload a, a YouTube video, you know, there's a lot of things that you, you, you know, obviously you choose the title, you know, you type in the title, you type in the description of the video, and you can also choose tags. You know, these are words that are, like, associated with your video that hopefully, you know, when they get searched, your video will, will, will rank higher in the search results. But, I read something, you know, like about the tags and it says like, you know, tags aren't really <laughs> and this was on the YouTube page, like on the actual creator, like create a video, you know, page like the, you know, where you're, where you're uploading and it's like, yeah, tags don't really do much for imp improving your search results. So guy says, how do neutrons influence chemical reactions, if at all, you know? That's a good question. That's a really good question. Oh, I think I remember learning something about this. I think I remember learning something about this. Yeah. Well, I'm... You, You've kind of stumped me on the chemical reactions part. I, I, it's a little vague, but or it's a little fuzzy, but I think I remember something along the lines of like different isotopes can have somewhat different chemical reactivities. But, you know, one of the things that comes to mind, you know, in terms of like neutrons, isotopes, things like that is, uh, you know, deuterium, right? So deuterium is, you know, hydrogen, <laughs> sorry for stumping. Oh no, that's okay. I'm happy to be stumped. I'll actually look into this and get back to you on the next stream. That's actually good. It's actually really good. I'm happy to be stumped. Yeah, I, I don't profess to be like the all-knowing, omniscient person. Like, I think finding answers is just important as knowing them. But where I was going with that is like using, you know, what they call them deuterated solvents, right? You know, which is basically like every hydrogen atom in the solvent in the molecule has been replaced by a deuterium atom, which is still hydrogen, but it's hydrogen. Uh, it's it's heavy hydrogen. It's it's a proton and a neutron instead of one proton with no neutrons, right? Hydrogen two. It's also called deuterium colloquially. Deuterated solvents. So if you have like acetone, right? Acetone has uh, what is it like three carbons, six hydrogens, and an oxygen. If you were to take those six hydrogens on the acetone and replace them all with deuterium 
you would have deuterated acetone, right? And people use deuterated solvents for nuclear magnetic, magnetic uh, resonance spectroscopy um, so that, I mean, for, for, for reasons that I'll perhaps get into in another video, um, molecules that have even mass numbers, right? Even number of, of uh, nucleons, of, of protons plus neutrons. Nuclei that have even numbers of, of neutrons plus protons, they don't give a signal in a nuclear magnetic resonance spectrum. So by using that type of solvent, only your analyte, only the thing that you're, only the thing that you're actually studying is, is showing the signal in the spectrum. And, and that kind of spectrum shows you like, you know, it gives you a lot of information about the structure of the molecule. Guy says, maybe a heavier atom would require more energy to get going. Yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, cause like you think about what a chemical reaction is, right? Chemical reactions involve electron flow. Electrons being pulled off of some atoms and being stuck onto others and new chemical bonds forming. And again, chemical bonds are just electrons, right? Single, double, triple covalent bonds, just two, four, and six electrons respectively. So it's really the charge that's kind of doing the work. It's not necessarily the mass, right? It's the charge of those electrons that's really the driving force. So I'm gonna have to order pretty soon. So just bear with me while I order my food. Please don't go anywhere. I love all four of you. Thank you for joining my stream. I really appreciate it. Good question so far. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Doing well, how are you? Good. Uh, may I please order um, the large uh, iced coffee? Regular. And then um, could I also get a large Coke? Our is going to be 570 at the cash card. Oh, card. My card starts is not working. Oh, so just pull forward and. Yes, sir, and they'll take you up there. Gotcha. Thank you. My pleasure. What's the name? Ben. All right, just ordered a coffee for the wife and a Coca-Cola for myself. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Akko says, yeah, I'm thinking physics, not chemistry. Yeah, it's a good question though. It's a good question. I'm, I might not be qualified to answer it, but it's still a good question. Now I'm curious, I'm gonna look it up and get back to you. Guy says, why don't you post any organic chemistry content? Um, that's a good question. That's a good question. Um, the reason why I haven't posted any organic chemistry content is because, and this isn't a good reason, but it's kind of my reasoning. It's because I haven't finished my general chemistry content, right? I have zero videos on chemical equilibrium. I have zero videos on acid base. I have zero videos on free energy and thermodynamics. I have zero videos on electrochemistry. I have zero videos on intermolecular forces. You know, like there's still so much general chem chemistry stuff that I have left to cover. And I don't, you know, again, there's nothing commanding me to do these videos in order. You know, like I'm just basically following my own textbook from college. There's nothing compelling me to do that other than my own sort of OCD or perfectionism or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I think I want to like at least have a, like a, a like a full textbook's worth of, ideally, I'd like to have like a full general chemistry textbooks worth of, of, of videos uploaded before I start dipping into the organic stuff. <laughs> but I do love organic, don't get me wrong. Organic was my favorite when I was studying. So, uh, people say, do people mistake your hat for a MAGA hat? Some employees refuse to serve customers with MAGA hats. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, look, I, I have received a couple of very nasty comments from people who obviously think that this is a MAGA hat um, and they're hilarious. <laughs> I think it's really, really funny. Oh, I didn't know you were a racist this whole time. Unsubscribed, you're a jerk, Trump is shit. You know, those kind of uh, nagging, whining people that don't, that can't even take the time to read the text on a hat. Um, so yeah, definitely some people do. Some people do mistake my hat for a MAGA hat. But let me tell you something. 
there's a difference between the way that people behave online and the way that people behave in person. And you're always going to find some video of somebody, you know, going crazy and refusing service to somebody just because of the hat that they're wearing. You're always going to find something like that. And my personal view on that is that even if this was a MAGA hat, which it's not, but even if it was, if somebody is going to, <laughs> if somebody is going to withhold service of food or any kind of product or anything based on that, then I don't want to do business with them. I don't want to give them my money in exchange for whatever they're selling because I can get that shit elsewhere from somebody who isn't a complete dumbass. <laughs> so, but uh, I'll tell you something about this hat. I think I've mentioned this before in a previous live stream is that when I wear this hat in public, I, I get approached by people and they talk, like it sparks a discussion about chemistry. There was a nice young gentleman who worked at Home Depot who walked up to me and uh, I think I was actually wearing this, this, the same shirt too. Let me show you my shirt. My shirt is a goldfish. Isn't that cool? I got a Make chem Chemistry Great Again hat and a goldfish sh shirt. And I think I was wearing this exact shirt and hat combination and a, and a kid who worked at Home Depot came up to me. And, and when I say kid, I mean like, I think he's like a senior in high school or something like that. And he's like, you must be a chemistry teacher. I'm like, well, you know, I don't teach at a school anymore. I tried that, didn't work but I do have a YouTube channel and uh, I gave him one of my business cards. We chatted for a little bit. Um, he later subscribed to my YouTube channel, uh, left a comment on one of my videos and uh, you know, it's nice, nice, pleasant interaction. So most of my interactions with people in the real world, you know, where you actually like give people eye contact and actually shake their hands and you're not, you're, you don't have this screen and keyboard and anonymity that you can hide behind. Those people are all nice, at least in my community. Here in my, in my local environment where I live here in South Carolina, at this particular part of the state, everybody is nice. Everywhere I go out in public, everybody's nice. No matter what I'm wearing, doesn't matter. I don't get any dirty looks. I don't get any scowls on their face, no, nothing. Everybody is very pleasant. It's pretty refreshing. It's pretty nice. So, but yeah, I'm sure people have wa have seen this hat and then like take another look at it and then see that it doesn't say make America great again. That's kind of the point. The, the point is to draw attention and spark discussion. And it's very, it's been very successful in doing that. So does that answer your question? <laughs> I know I just kind of rambled. That was a really long answer. I apologize for putting you through that. Um, Cool, now I'll get a Silver Veins one. I just made it up, but it'd be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah that'd be kind of cool. I could see that. I suck at graphic design though, so I wouldn't be the guy who could design it. I, I do make all of, you know, pretty much all of my own images for my YouTube channel, but as far as like programs that I use to design things, I don't have like Adobe Illustrator or anything like that. Like I use some pretty primitive software to do my images. So. But yeah, if, if anybody wants to uh, be such a jerk that they're not even gonna sell me a chicken sandwich because uh, because of a uh, a hat that represents a particular um, politician or candidate, then um, then I'm I'm gonna ostracize that person. They don't deserve my money, and I'll take my business elsewhere. Yep. Whatever happened to just disagreeing with people on stuff? Like when did when did things become so, you know, personal? You know, like I just I just don't get that. I just don't get that. I'm sure, there's a lot of reasons for that, but it's hard for me to comprehend that. You disagree with me politically? You're an asshole. Like no, I, I don't. I don't know. Is carbon's thermal resistance the highest possible or is there a possible compound that can exceed carbon's record? You are two for two, sir. <laughs> you have stumped me twice. I don't know. I don't know. Good question. I'm trying to think. 
What do you mean by thermal resistance? I don't know. I'm not very familiar with that property. I mean, I know like heat capacity, you know, like how much heat something requires to absorb, you know, to get it hot, like how, you know, how many joules that it absorbs per, um, you know, per gram per degree Celsius specific heat capacity. Um, like waters, for instance, is a very high heat capacity, but I, I have a feeling that thermal resistance, oh, melting point. Um, the, is, so you're saying that does carbon have the highest melting point of all known substances? I don't think so. Although there's different allotropes of carbon, right? There's graphite, there's diamond, there are carbon, you know, nanotubes and things like that. I imagine they would all have different melting points. But uh, where did you hear that? Where did you hear that carbon has the highest melting point? I've never heard that. Oh, I have to make some room. Make some room for my drinks. Bringing the wife a coffee, and then I will be enjoying a Coca-Cola. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there are some compounds that have a higher melting point than carbon. Pretty sure that's the case. But again, it depends on the allergy of carbon. My name is Ben. And it's 570. Here you go. Yeah, I'm getting a coffee for the wife and a Coca-Cola for myself. Coca-Cola is like my biggest vice. I cannot, you know, I, I almost need to like enter a 12-step recovery program from Coca-Cola because... I'm like, I'm hooked on it. I'm like, I, I, I don't know. It's hard to quit. Ben. Let me see your message that you just typed in there. I saw some facts on the periodic table that said that carbon has the highest melting point, about 3.4 K degrees Celsius. Oh, thank you. Yeah, maybe. I mean, you know, maybe... Sorry. All right, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. oh. Have a nice day. Thank you. You do the same. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe it has the highest melting point among the elements, but that doesn't mean that there aren't compounds that might have a higher melting point than carbon. I don't know. Gosh, I feel like an idiot. It's supposed to be like a chemistry guy, and I'm getting stumped over and over again. Not cool. One of you guys needs to to toss me up a slow pitch that I can knock out of the park. <laughs> Easy question. But like I said before, you know, finding the answers is just as important as knowing them. So I am happy to look these things up get back to you guys but uh, yep you guys have any interesting plans for the weekend I could tell you what I'm doing but you know I'd rather you know have a back and forth talk about what you guys are up to I don't want to just talk about myself all the time But if I don't read anything in the chat, if I don't see anything in the chat, then I'll just uh, start talking about what my weekend plans are just for the sake of filling the air with something so I'm not just sitting here in silence the whole stream.
sorry, somebody just asked me a question, but for some reason I'm having a hard time pulling up the chat. There it is. Okay. Easy question. How to easily separate carbon and oxygen from CO2. Plants do it easily, but humans vi uh, find it very difficult with machines. Well, then I think that's the answer. <laughs> Cultivate more plants, <laughs> right? Have them do the work for you. You know, there's all kinds of, uh, there's all kinds of, uh, you know, sort of industrial production that's done with, with biology, that's done with organisms. One of the most fascinating examples is, is uh, insulin, right? So insulin is the, you know, the, the drug that's used to, 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 uh, it's, you know, to help diabetes, right? It's like the hormone or whatever that people with diabetes lack that helps regulate their, their, uh, blood sugar and stuff like that. Right. And, you know, people understood that insulin was the problem, but they didn't know how they, like, what's the best way to make insulin or what's the best way to get insulin. And what they used to do was they used to just kill pigs and extract insulin from pigs. But the problem with that is that insulin from pigs isn't exactly identical structurally to insulin from human beings. And so a lot of diabetics had some pretty bad reactions, bad side effects to taking pig insulin. Now, there were a few chemists that successfully completed the total synthesis of insulin, human insulin, in their lab, but that was a very, very expensive process. You, had, you start with a bunch of chemicals, you end up with a tiny yield. It was very inefficient. That wasn't until they figured out that what you can do is you can inject the gene for insulin production into bacteria. So you can open up, because you know bacteria, they have like one circular chromosome, right? You can open up that bacterial chromosome and literally like insert the gene for insulin production and you can literally have the bacteria grow the insulin for you because bacteria grow exponentially, right? One splits into two, each of those two splits into two, each of those four splits into two, each of those eight, each of those, you know, like, like and so on, exponential growth. And so that's how insulin is currently produced. It's produced by genetically modifying bacteria E. coli specifically, Escherichia coli is what they use. So when people say like, I'm, a, I'm against GMOs and all this stuff, and it's like, well, I'm not because, you know, I, you know, I've known a couple of type one diabetics that want affordable insulin. <laughs> so they're, you know, they're happy to have these GMOs because they're sa it's saving their life and it's not, you know, bankrupting them fi financially. So anyway, uh, Somebody says, I meant to ask, why is it chemically so difficult to separate them? I know that the molecule is very stable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I, I don't know. It's hard to explain this in a very, like, easy way. Um, because like when you talk about like, you know, stability, I mean, you can, you can talk about like the, the, you know, obviously like, you know, CO2, if you look at like a, a, a simple, you know, Lewis dot structure for CO2, right. You have like these two double covalent bonds, right the carbon is doubly bonded to two oxygens. So you can at least make, you can draw the conclusion that those doubly bonded oxygens are gonna be more difficult to pry away from the molecule than something like, I'm trying to think of a, uh, of a similar structure with just carbon singly bonded to two oxygens, like maybe, I think it would be called methane diol, right? It would be like a carbon bonded to two oxygens 
um, but they're not double bonds, they're just single bonds, and then there's enough hydrogens to give everything the proper number of bonds and all that. So certainly you could understand why a CO2 molecule would be more stable and difficult to break apart than, than methane diol, right? Because those bonds are, are stronger, right? Double bond, a triple bond is, is strong, double bond, which is stronger than a single bond. So anyway, um, so there's that point of view, but if you want to get into the actual, like, you know, the real meat of what makes molecules like more stable than other others, um, you have to you have to learn about something in physical chemistry called chemical potential. And I think it, I can't remember the symbol. I think it's a, it's a mu. It's kind of looks like a U, but it's got the little tail on it. I think it's the same symbol that's used in the, in the prefix multiplier micro. Like if you see like micro liter, it's like a little U with a tail on it. And then a, a capital L for liter. That's, that's a Greek letter that's called mu, right? And chemical potential, I think its symbol is also mu. And that's kind of the property. It's like a thermodynamic thing. It's, it's, it's the kind of property that, um, but it's contingent a lot of, uh, upon a lot of other factors too. So that's, that's a tough question to answer in an easy kind of way. It's, it's very tough to answer those questions in an eloquent type of way. I mean, a lot of chemistry professors are really good at, you know, studying, but they're not that good at teaching. And I don't, I mean, it's hard, like teaching physical chemistry while like not stuttering or tripping over your words and all that shit. It's not easy. It's not easy. So... Anyway, yeah, that's a shitty answer. I apologize for that, but it's another thing for me to to think about. And again, it's not it's not so much that I need to like like I I, I have an intuitive understanding of the answer to the question. It's just that being able to like articulate it from a ground up type of way without taking like you know three hour long chemistry lectures to answer it would be difficult. It would be difficult. But I would say, um, look up, you know, things like uh, chemical potential or partial molar Gibbs energy, and that might help you get to where you need to be. Uh, he says, that's okay, trying to adopt a chemist mindset because I'm more of an engineer slash physics type of person. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um, do you know if you have to study or like do you intend on studying physical physical chemistry at all because physical chemistry you know that's like the kind of that's like the kind of class that separates the men from the boys in chemistry you know or separates the uh the women from the girls don't want to leave anybody out but uh yeah if you have to take physical chemistry then you'll really like start to understand you know the mathematics behind it all you know because there's a lot of there's a lot of like you know partial differentiation and differentials and integration and all kinds of like advanced calculus and differential equation stuff that applies to to chemistry and that's what you would learn in, in physical chemistry i'd like to learn chemistry from zero to 100 but just as a hobby i'm an economics major oh <laughs> Okay. Okay, cool. Cool. You're not trying to cook up uh, illegal drugs that started with an M, are you? <laughs> Just kidding. Just teasing. But yeah. Those are good questions, though. I mean, it seems like you, you sort of already have a chemist mindset, and I'm not trying to, like, I'm not trying to like stroke the ego too hard or anything, but, um, you know, the chemist mindset is, is just, is asking the questions and figuring things out. You know, it's, it's not, you know, I want to learn this so that I can get an A on my test. You know, it's, I just want to, I just want the knowledge. Um, so that's kind of cool. The guy says, of course not, but I'm just very interested in physics, chemistry, economics is extremely boring. Then why are you doing it? Why are you doing economics if you're not passionate about it? Is it a money thing? Are you just, are you just, you know, driven by money? I'm not saying that's wrong. You know, some people are more driven by money than others. Uh, that's okay. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sort of in the middle on that, on that, 
in, in that spectrum. Like, I, money is obviously important, but you know, I I, I don't want to be miserable at my job either. I don't want to be like super bored or understimulated or whatever. So, of course, you know, if I didn't get paid for the work that I do, I wouldn't do it for free. But you know, so I think there's sort of a happy balance somewhere where you know, you make enough money to cover your expenses and save some money and, and you know maybe enjoy yourself a little bit get out of debt you know as fast as possible and then and then uh which i don't really have any like consumer debt i just have a house payment um which i expect to pay off in uh less than five years but um yeah so so yeah that's that's my question is uh you know why why study economics if it's boring if it doesn't you know, if you're not passionate about it, why study it? <sighs> not even money, just wrong life choices. I'm studying programming. I've already finished uni. I'm learning about nature in the meantime. Your videos are great. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think that's cool. You know, I, I think I think that's really cool that you know, especially now that we have, you know, YouTube, that we have Wikipedia, although Wikipedia, I'm not a huge fan of Wikipedia lately, the way that they're, they're, you know, they're kind of slandering some people that they don't disagree with politically. And I think that's not cool. They're like locking their pages so that they can't be edited. That's, that's not cool. Um, but I've, I, I have gotten a lot of utility from Wikipedia, so it's not, I can't knock it entirely. But, um, with the internet, with all these resources that we have available, I mean, you used to have to pay so much money to get access to this information, or you used to have to like go to the library and like flip through that card catalog and oh, you can only check out you know a couple of books at a time and all this stuff. It's like nope, now you can just pull out your phone and just look up whatever you want, and it's amazing. It is amazing, you know. And me, I don't know how old you guys are, but me, you know. I kind of came of age with the internet. You know, I was like a kid when the internet was starting to be a big thing. Um, when people started to email and stuff, I was like seven, eight years old. I didn't like it. <laughs> At first, I'm like, no, I don't, you know, I, I, I don't want to use the internet. I want to go outside. I want to, you know, which I largely, you know, kind of hold that sentiment today. I mean, I do outdoor activities and stuff. Like this weekend, I'm actually like, I mentioned or like at the beginning of the stream that my mom's coming to town tomorrow and we're actually going to go to Lake Marion it's the biggest lake in South Carolina. We're going to go to Lake Marion and we're going to take a boat out. You can rent a pontoon boat, take it out. It's going to be a great time. I'm so looking forward to it. And if we get there early enough, I'm sure we'll be able to get a few hours on the water before, before it starts raining. So, yeah. That's really cool. Though. I, I definitely admire, admire your uh, curiosity. I think that's really cool. At least, you know, enjoy it while you have it. Enjoy the flexibility while you have it. Because as you, you know, get older and start a family and all that stuff, you know, you'll have to really, you'll have to manage your time to the point where, you know, you'll spend a lot of time doing things that you have to do and not quite as much time doing things that you necessarily want to do. Um, I don't really have a whole lot of time for hobbies nowadays. Um, one of the reasons that's, you know, one, one reason among many that I've tried to keep my videos short is so that I can like shoot them and then be done and move on to the next item on my to-do list, which is, you know, 10 miles long. <laughs> so, yeah. When you get older and you have responsibilities, I mean, shit, my second daughter's on the way. I'm not going to be a whole lot of free time. It's going to be very busy. Not going to be miserable, but... You just, you know, you don't have quite as much luxury of free time as you used to when you, when you start a family. But I still wouldn't trade for anything. So. But the whole point of all that is there's a lot of people, I don't know how old you are again, but there's a lot of people who, who aren't as curious or interested about the world. They just, you know, mindlessly scroll through their social media feeds all day. That's no way to live. So I think you're doing it right. And thank you again for calling my videos great. I really appreciate that. It means a lot. I mean, it feels pretty good to have to to be back on the horse, you know, to be making educational videos again. 
I've wanted to do it for a long time, but you know, you know, you get busy, you get unmotivated sometimes. Shit happens. You know, you move to a different state like I did <laughs> last November or last September is when I moved. So all right, I think I'll leave the stream on for maybe a couple more minutes if you guys wanted to get any last minute questions in. And then um I'm gonna head inside. I'm I'm in my driveway right now, so <laughs> my wife's probably like, what the hell is he doing out there? Anything last minute you guys want to talk about? Guy says, thank you. I will heed your advice. By the way, a few streams ago, you mentioned you were doing some repairs in your home. How is that going? He says he's 25 or she, I think I'm assuming you're a, you're a, you're a gentleman. Um, I think you said that last time. I'm sorry if I, if you didn't, I forgot. Uh, home repairs are okay. Uh, you know, I've kind of, been slacking on my shower projects, you know, so that I could focus on my YouTube stuff more. But, um, you know, and, and we've, we've been seeing a lot of family lately. So like most of our weekends have been spent like seeing family and stuff instead of like working on house repairs. But, uh, you know, it's, it's going pretty well in the shower. I've got the plumbing almost finished. Like there's a leak that I just have to fix, but it takes a long time to fix the leak because you have to turn off the water supply to the house you have to separate the joint. It's a soldered joint. So you have to heat it up really hot with a torch to separate it. And then you have to, you know, tighten the connections and then solder it back together. And then, you know, turn the water to the house on, check for leaks. And, and then once I do that, the plumbing phase of that project will be done. And then I'll be able to install my cement backer board. And then, you know, basically put the tile on top of that. I mean, really, it's a whole lot of work. Um, I'm sort of condensing it down into a couple of very short sentences, but that's how that project's going. That's really the main thing that I'm working on right now. We're also going to get our deck redone, like our front deck. We're going to get our, uh, our floor boards painted on the deck and we're going to get like new patio furniture and stuff like that so that our front porch is like a nice place to hang out. That'd be cool. Maybe some Cracker Barrel rocking chairs. That'd be pretty sweet. Okay. Kathy says, thank you again for the comfortable stream. Yes. Uh, oh, no, that's not Kathy. Sorry. Kathy says, <laughs> I'll read your message again later, Echo. Do you have a list of subject in order that you want to cover in video? Congratulations on Baby Girl on the way. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do I have a list of subject in order that you want to cover in video? Yeah. So, so okay. Yeah. So, recently, I, um, <laughs> I recently, what was I saying? I just lost my train of thought completely. Yeah, so, so a few months ago, I put out a poll, you know, asking the audience what subjects they wanted to see discussed. And the subject that got the most votes was chemical bonding, things like uh, Vesper theory, valence bond theory, molecular orbital theory, uh, you know, molecular shapes, that kind of stuff. Um, so that's probably going to be um, summer starts today, last day of work. Congratulations. <laughs> Are you going out for, for a beer tonight to celebrate? <laughs> that's great. Good stuff. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to finish up like the chemical bonding stuff. And then after that, I don't know, I might do like, you know, liquid solids, inter intermolecular forces, cohesion, adhesion, colligative properties, Rowlett's law, ideal, non-ideal behavior solutions, maybe all that kind of stuff. And then maybe later after that, maybe I'll do some chemical kinetics and some equilibrium and some acid base and then some free energy and thermodynamics and then maybe some electrochemistry after that. A lot of topics, a lot of topics, but it's exciting. It would be cool. It would be cool to build that database that has a video for everything. That's kind of my ultimate goal, a video for everything, everything chemistry. So, mm -hmm. yep, yep, yep. All right. Well, I think I'm going to hang it up here. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are awesome. Um, yeah, just really appreciate the support. Uh, it's been great to come back to YouTube and start contributing again. Um, if you would like to follow me on any of the main social media platforms, I do have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Discord, all of the links for which are in the... Um, all of those links are, are in the... Uh, 
my channel page at the very top there's the channel banner the art whatever you want to call it it's blue with like a red periodic table on it, it says ben's chem videos your place for chemistry lessons and tutorials or something like that um in the bottom hand right hand bottom right hand corner of that channel art uh are the links to facebook instagram twitter and discord so if you would like to follow me on those platforms i would really appreciate your support uh, especially discord because that, that would give me uh, more of a chance more of an opportunity to interact with you guys directly maybe do a group video call or something like that i mean i think in this entire stream i haven't had more than like seven concurrent viewers this entire time and you know that could be like a seven-way call where i could actually talk to you guys and so i'm not typing or i'm not talking to a i'm not talking to a screen you know i'm not talking and just reading things and responding to them i can actually have like a back and forth conversation I think that'd be really cool so um that's definitely something that I see in the near future. Um, but people got to join up my Discord and show interest in that kind of thing before I can do that. Um, so, yeah. All right. Well, again, I'm going to get out of here. But love you guys. Take care.